webinar. This is our monthly webinar series on software development slash agile software development topics. Today the topic is mobile development HTML5 versus native. This is a really good topic. We have we pick topics based on what we are finding in our uh, ecosystem of clients and in um, uh, community, community what topics are worthy of more discussion. And this particular topic seems to be coming up very often now that many of our clients, as you all know, uh, in your own uh, situations, have a need to build a version of mobile app for your software. It's pretty much it's a, it's a requirement now. Whatever software you may have in a web uh, version, you need something on the mobile to go with it. And the challenge is uh, then, of course, what technology to, to, to choose to build your mobile version, whether you build a nat native version in iOS, uh, or Android or any of the other flavors that are appropriate for your target market or do you go with the promise of HTML5 which promises to be uh, a cross-platform uh, way of building a mobile app. So today uh, we will deep dive into this topic and, and I'll warn you going to the content this is not a material so we are likely to run out of time and uh, what Roy and I were talking was we may do a follow-up webinar after this to take some more content but today we'll go through a fast version of, of this particular topic of HTML5 versus native. And um, logistically, what the way we will do the webinar is, as usual, 45 minutes or so of presentation that uh, I'll present Rohit and in uh, introduce Rohit in a minute. He'll cover this topic. And then we'll take questions along the way. Those questions that make sense to be taken along the way, we'll pick them up along the way to so make sure uh, nothing gets lost. And then other questions are reserved for the end. And at the end, we'll reserve 10 minutes or 15 minutes to take specific questions to this topic. And then after the webinar is done later today, more likely tomorrow, you will receive a follow-up email uh, with a link to the document that we used. Uh, and then we'll have eventually a recorded version also available for those who uh, want to share it with your colleagues and peers. With that, let me introduce Rohit. Rohit is a resident uh, mobile expert at Synergip. He's been with us for several years and has plays many roles, but his most important role is Director of Engineering at Synergip and essentially follows and, 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 and um, keeps up with bleeding edge technologies, mobile being just one of them these days. So he is an excellent person to talk about this. He has been following this market and, and, and doing hands-on architecture and design work as well as development work in this space for, for uh, quite some time now. So without spending more time on the setup. I'm going to turn it over to Rohit to go through it. And Rohit, uh, take it away. Sure. Thanks, Heyman. So today, as, as Heyman mentioned, we're going to talk about uh, different approaches which we can take when we're doing mobile application development. Uh, we're going to talk about HTML5, which we all know uh, is, you know, hosting your uh, mobile applications as web applications, native applications where you actually put them on App Store. We'll also be talking about a third way which is catching a lot of buzz, which is called as hybrid. So we will we'll go and begin over, over this. A little bit more about me, uh, just to let you know what I, what I have been doing, so you have uh, more confidence in what I'm saying. Last year, I wrote a book called as Beginning Phone Gap for APRES. And uh, um, I was also architect of a, uh, of a product line called as Quick Office Connect for a company named uh, uh, Google, uh, company in Quick Office, which was taken up uh, by Google recently, and it was a document uh, sync uh, product, uh, which was actually built as a hybrid mobile application. So whatever I'm talking about hybrid mobile applications today would be based on my you know experience from working on this product. So without uh, further delay, we'll start and talk about mobile apps and various ways of developing them. So um, when you see this slide over here, on the left-hand side, you will see the applications like Sajam, which is an application which uh, enables you to uh, you know, find out what music you're currently hearing. Uh, then you have our Twitter uh, native client over here on the left-hand side. Uh, so these are native applications which you typically install from uh, App Store. They're available on your phone. They're, they're available offline. And you can launch them whenever you want. On the other hand, we have uh, we can always go to uh, our Safari browser on iPhone or a Chrome browser on Android and type in a particular URL. And we can go to uh, a Twitter mobile web application like you're seeing 
on the right hand side in the center. And you can also go to sites like tripadvisor.com. And these websites have more or less a look and feel of a mobile app. So these, these are two distinct ways of uh, developing mobile apps, two distinct categories of mobile apps. One is native and one is HTML5. So before we go uh, any further, we have to understand when you're building mobile applications, uh, the approach which we take depends on what kind of expectations do you have from your mobile application. And it is, uh, it is very important to be clear about this. And I'll make this clear by taking an example. Uh, so over here, you will look at uh, a couple of uh, pictures on the screen. I'm talking about how people may choose to commute uh, um, on a daily basis. Some people uh, would like to take a public transit. They would like to go to the stop uh, you know, at a particular time, or take a ride, um, then you know, maybe a couple of transits and you know, the destination. In this case, uh, it's ease and peace for them to, to sit, in the, uh, sit in the bus and, you know, and uh, it's cost effective also. On the other side, they have to adhere to the schedule. They cannot take, change the route and things like that. So they're giving up something. So extreme end, we have a, an experience of driving a car. You can uh, hop in a car, take any route which you want. You can uh, go anytime which you want. Whereas on the other hand, you have to pay for the cost. You have to pay for the fuel. So it's a costly. And then people would uh, come up with a, a hybrid approach that I want best of both worlds. So people would go with some where they would still have a car, but it's shared. So you still have to have some shared routes, but you know, it's it's more in compliance with driving a car and more you know having a benefit of a public transit. So today I'm going to compare uh, having uh, driving a car to a native app experience, which is the best, and a carpooling to a hybrid app experience and a public transit to H5 app experience. I'm going to use these analogies uh, uh, as I go through the presentation. And it's important that we know what to expect when you're building our applications. Going further, um, this slide, which talks about rich mobile experience, we would like to clarify what it means uh, when we talk about rich mobile experience. So we're talking about level 0 to level 4. So say that you have a, a web application or a website for your company business. A level zero is when you don't do anything uh, to your web, website or web application. And a user simply uses his mobile browser to access your uh, company website or, or your business website. In this case, he will be able to browse it, but it won't be the most optimum way. The person will most probably have to zoom in, pinch, scroll left and right. The levels one is when you can actually hire a designer to get some style sheets in to make it a bit mobile friendly, to you know make it fit on a mobile screen. Level two is when you try to build a, a HTML file mobile app app. So it behaves more like mobile app. You have screens transitioning in and out. You're using much more cooler HTML5 features in that you, you know you can probably ask for a, for a geolocation if you're having a map. Uh, you can uh, you can use much more features like uh, SVG or Canvas for cooler graphics. So it's more, it's a more jazzy, it's a more uh, hip uh, mobile uh, web application where there's a screen flow which kind of mimics the screen flow of a mobile application. But it is still hosted. You still have to access it through a browser. Level three is hybrid mobile app. I won't talk much about it because we haven't really defined what hybrid mobile app is. Level four is native mobile app which you are aware of. It's, it's your native Twitter app, native, native Foursquare app, uh, all these native apps which are installed. So today we will be covering from level two to level four. So we are not covering anything uh, from level zero to level one. And we just wanted to clarify this because uh, many people who are joining us in today's webinar will be coming from all the backgrounds. So it's very important we clarify this point. Now, going further, we'll look at the types of mobile app. And simply, we have three types over here, HTML5, native, and hybrid. And hybrid, like the name suggests, is a combination of both HTML5 and native. And we'll look into that in more detail 
as we progress to HTML5 and native. So HTML5 or mobile apps, um, like I mentioned, these are mobile, these are web applications hosted, which behave and which behave more like you know mobile applications. They have this uh, the form factor of a mobile phone. If you click on hotels, the screen will transition, and you will see another screen for hotels. There'll be a back button, uh, or if you just press a back button on the phone, it will transition back to the original screen, so and so. So this is a typical uh, mobile web application built with HTML5 ish features. Going to HTML5 overview, uh, we are used to using uh, cooler uh, websites or web applications like Twitter or something else. And HTML5 has become a buzzword nowadays for desktop, uh, you know, browser applications. And we will see in a while what it means to actually talk about, to say that the application is HTML5. We all understand that the application hosted on a uh, on a server and accessible through a browser is a web application. But what it means to make it HTML5. So we just take a look into that as we go ahead. So one important thing to remember when you're talking about HTML app, and this is again a repeat of what we're talking about, but here we like to go further into further more detail. And this detail is required to set the right kind of context when you talk about hybrid applications. So typically you launch your uh, browser on a mobile phone and a browser has a sandbox environment. What I mean by sandbox environment is when a website loads or a web application loads inside the browser app, it typically has no connection to the mobile OS. It doesn't have any connection to your file system. It doesn't have any connection to any database you may, you may have. You may have an entire contacts directory on your mobile phone. There's absolutely no connection to those things. Uh, but with HTML5, what's happening is we are getting some of uh, some access, some limited access to certain things, and we'll talk about these things. So you see a dotted line coming from a browser app to a geolocation. That's because HTML5 is you know opening up that route. So if you are loading a map, uh, maps of Google.com in a browser, it could ask the mobile OS what's the location, and the user would be prompted that uh, Google is asking for that location, and if you allow that, um, if you allow that prompt, it will actually go and ask the mobile OS about geolocation. So five, so five has limited capabilities compared to native mobile application. It's getting more and more capabilities as we go ahead, and we need to understand what these capabilities are, so as to understand what are the strengths. So it's important to focus on HTML5 new features. So in short, uh, uh, HTML5 app can ask for location of the user. If you uh, have audio or video, it's very easy to play audio and video using HTML5. You don't require any Flash plugins like the old days. All you have to do is use the HTML5 new audio and video tags. If you want to render some uh, charts and graphs, or if you want to render some running charts and graphs, uh, where you're showing that uh, one projection looks uh, you know, like this, and suddenly I want to change the projection, and it animates to show you the projection in charts and graphs. You can do that by using the Canvas and SVG capabilities of HTML5. If your application needs to store some information about the user, like some preference or what the user was doing last time, it's not there. Capabilities. The local search capabilities is not huge. It's around 4 or 5 MB. But sure, that's a huge amount of data uh, available for a web application. And these features were not there before. They're available now. Furthermore, you can have a limited multi threading available in your application. So in the background, your application can go and fetch something, do some processing. And this, this is possible through web workers which is point number five. Um, also, if you're uh, you know, creating games in HTML5 or you're creating collaborative uh, document editing applications or chat applications, you can have real-time full duplex communication happening between your mobile applications and the server using WebSockets. So these are exciting uh, days for HTML5, and you need to be aware that your uh, HTML applications can do much more 
than what you have seen uh, traditional applications do on a, uh, on a browser. So we talk about HTML5, uh, what are the positive sides of you know building an application and hosting it on a server, which is a HTML5 mobile application. First of all, it's the lowest development cost for your team, uh, for your company, because the people who were developing your traditional web application could be trained to basically um, you know, put a mobile version, mobile HTML5 version. So your company can uh, basically launch a HTML5 uh, application, which is both desktop as well as mobile. Because even for the desktop browsers, you can use features from HTML5, and you can have a version for mobile. Sometimes what people do is they only have a single application uh, in HTML5, which is hosted. And it adapts. It basically detects at runtime that the form factor is of a tablet or form factor is of a desktop. So it adapts itself. And it says that the form factor is of a mobile phone. It will have a different kinds of transition. So this is becoming more and more popular as we as we go ahead. This maximum reuse, talk reuse of uh, the same theme. You're talking about reuse of IP, what you already have. And that's that's crucial for saving cost. The next thing is you don't need to plan for any app store distribution. There are no hassles for getting a getting an account, getting uh, trying to put up your app on app store, waiting for its uh, uh, approval. And you, basically, you can plan that if I, if I put it on an app store, it's probably going to get rejected once, and after seven days, it will get approved. None of those things would be you know, a problem for you. One, another thing which is uh, very important, which people do not realize, is you have instant updates available for your end consumer. So all the clients are always using the latest version. And this is not always true with mobile native applications. A native application put on an app store or a Google Play could have seven versions. Some people may have the latest version, but others could be on an earlier version. So you have different versions of mobile applications. You might need to maintain different versions of uh, web services if, if the change is so huge. So one of the pros of uh, HTML application is it's always latest, only one version for everyone. On the other side, HTML5 cons. You have to understand the typical limitation of HTML5 app. It is that you can only launch this application when you are actually opening the browser. So let's take an example of this. So I'm I'm going on my um, a user is actually opening a Safari browser on iPhone and he's typing in Twitter. He goes to twitter.com and this application mobile Twitter web application only works, works when he's launching it. Now he can go there, he can check for his latest tweets, and he can post a new tweet, and he can, but there's no way he'll be notified automatically that he got new tweets. Or there's no way some background processing will keep on happening. So this is, Something which is a drawback of having an HTML5 app. It's always when the user wants to do things, he can do those things. But the application cannot inform the user. So the cons is the user needs to open a browser, load the Twitter site, load the slowest, because along with the data, you're loading the entire HTML content, the images, the style sheets the required JavaScript, everything is low. Like I said, no notifications are available for any updates. If I get a new tweet, you know, the app has to be open and it has to be pulling. You know, if the app is not running, there's no way I can get a notification. Limited access to phone features. Smart application, if, I'm, if I want to find out what kind of network I'm on, like if I'm on 3G network or I'm on Wi-Fi network, and then I need to do some kind of download, I can't do those things on HTML5. There's no way of you know, accessing the network status. And, uh, or for example, if some user is following me on Twitter and I 
get information about that, and I would like to add this user to my contacts list, I cannot do that on HTML5 application because the HTML5 web application would not have access to the phone's address book, contacts application. One of the biggest problem is there is no app store marketing. Now hey, there are so many magazines and so many uh, so many uh, places where people are talking about uh, top ten apps in business productivity, top ten ads in media news references, things like that. And these ratings are very important for businesses to get more traction. And if you are putting the application, uh, hosting it all by yourself, you will have no connection with the App Store. And people won't even discover you. People won't even know how many uh, people actually downloaded the application or visited the application or read the application. So there's no authentic way of finding out that your HTML5 web application is doing good or not, except when you use your own analytical data. That's data coming from the same company who's claiming that. Uh, one more cons which is there which people don't realize is the HTML5 fragmentation. Now we are moving from mobile fragmentation to HTML5 fragmentation. When I say mobile fragmentation, I mean iOS, Android, Blackberry, Windows, Bada. There are many such things. This is a major fragmentation where everything is different. OS is different, language is different, the way this platform works are different. From there, we are moving to HTML5 fragmentation. We are saying that some of the features of HTML5 are available on one browser, but they are not available on other browser. And this is a much minor fragmentation. You will have to deal with this problem. So look at a pharmacy site where you have, uh, which is built on HTML5. You have a 3D skeleton which can rotate and give information about the bone structure. Now, for a, web, for a browser which supports uh, WebGL, you can always show this 3D content moving. But for a browser which does not support WebGL, you can always fall back to a 2G, 2D image of the same thing. This is how you handle HTML5 fragmentation. Uh, no. Heroes, before you go more on activity, one question. Which is sure. Good. So the point you had about limited access to phone features, the question that came in is, um, you have a phone number on the HTML app, uh, HTML5 app, and if you if you click that phone number to call, does it allow for you to uh, to call in HTML5? I believe so. I've seen that thing. Um, I don't use it personally, but that's uh, um, I have seen, I cannot confirm or deny that, but that should be that should be uh, that is possible. I've seen it. So we can go to the calling feature. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you go to Google search and you search for some phone, some local uh, businesses, you will see some phone numbers. So I, I believe if you click on those, you will be able to uh, call this. And, and that has nothing to do with uh, this uh, HTML5 feature. I don't see that as an HTML5 feature. I think that's the uh, feature product in the mobile browsers. Okay. okay. All right. So the next thing which I'm talking about is uh, simulation of native UX. Even though HTML5 is a free-form UI, you can have, you can build anything which you want on HTML5. Uh, people still will try to mimic uh, native UX. For example, if you have a back button, people would like to put it on top left corner, like on iOS. Similarly, if you have some nice-looking date widget, people would still like to mimic an iOS widget. So here, you are spending more efforts into mimicking you know, the look and feel of iOS. Or some other platform. So that's that comes in cons because the additional effort when you're working with HTML5. The next uh, area which you're going to look into is native app, and we'll quickly cover this because uh, there's not much debate about native app. So we're talking about native apps like Shazam, which I told you, or Twitter, and we'll talk about the capabilities of Twitter, Twitter app and compare it to the HTML5 web application uh, app. So here, if you see, um, the Twitter app has full access to the mobile OS. It can uh, have access to the network. It can figure out that I'm on 3G or Wi-Fi. It can have access to my camera. Of course, it can have access to my geolocation and also my contacts. So what can happen over here is when I launch my Twitter application and uh, it's running, it can run in the background also. 
and when I get a new tweet message from somebody, I get a notification saying that you got a tweet notification. And I don't have to go and open the application. And this is the beauty about mobile application. Without this, mobile applications are incomplete because they act like some kind of a you know, personal assistant for you, where they inform you that there's something exciting happening. Go check it out. At the same time, if you get some request or somebody is following you on Twitter and you want to add into your contacts or somehow you want to find out which people from your contacts are already on Twitter, that's possible because this app has access to your contacts. If you want to take a picture and you want to post a link of the picture on Twitter, you can access the camera over here and do everything. So virtually this is limitless when you go towards a, a native app. And uh, the, the pros for native apps are, are plenty. Proudness of mobile is available. Uh, ability to do build riches and faster app. So if the question which you have is that you have to build the richest and the fastest app which, which is possible, uh, then the natural answer is you have to go native because the UI also has to be totally native. It has to be uh, very, very smooth. Anything has to be possible. Um, again, the same points I'm going to repeat. Notifications is available. Offline storage is available. Even if you are not in a network area, your Twitter app will store and cache earlier tweets. You can still you know, visit them. Backend processing is available. Let's say you're talking about a Dropbox kind of sync client. It can sync files in the background. You don't have to actually launch it. The entire device sensor array is available to you. And the best part is App Store market monetization is possible. You can sell your apps. You can upgrade your apps. And you can rate your apps. You can get the ratings for what people are saying about your apps. And you can use those ratings for you know, getting more traction on your business. So this is the pros of uh, native application. On the other hand, you go to native app cons. Here we have to realize a couple of things. That the development cost over here is highest. And it's obvious because you need to have dedicated you know, different platforms. All these platforms, let's take three platforms, iOS, Android, and Windows 8. I haven't really seen any single developer or a team which is you know, equally on all the platforms. In fact, I haven't seen any, any single person having all those three skills when I'm actually hiring or you know, looking at people. So you have to have dedicated teams whether you have roadmap uh, for each platform. You may have uh, a much more better roadmap for iOS how much lesser for Windows 8 because you don't know where it's heading, but you will still need to have dedicated teams for them. Architecture reuse is possible in this case, but I have seen the design reuse and code reuse are possible. Of course, code reuse is not possible, but even design reuse is difficult because uh, the, the paradigms which is platform use are way in the nature. The, also, the apps will have to process the launching of new features. And, uh, Fragmentation is again an issue. And I'm talking about fragmentation inside a single platform, like Android. Tons of fragmentation. And you have to test your application on uh, various phones, various phones of different form factors, OS versions. And now recently, the fragmentation has also come to iOS. With iPhone 5 and iPhone 4, you have different form factors again. So here I'm just about to proceed to the hybrid mobile app. Um, if you have any questions from anybody, please let me know. No, I think we don't have anything waiting in the queue right now, so we can keep going. <laughs> okay, so I'll start by giving examples of hybrid mobile app. And understand this part that it's very difficult to find out when a mobile app is hybrid. Because a hybrid mobile app is also a native application in itself. So LinkedIn declared a couple of, uh, I think, weeks or months back that it's uh, mobile application is a hybrid mobile application, which is it's a HTML5 application embedded inside a native application. Uh, that's one example which I'm going to you know, give about hybrid mobile application. The second example is a work which we ourselves did on a product concept. And we'll talk about it in, in brief after a while. So hybrid mobile.
Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, you can hear you fine. So, folks, um, I apologize for this uh, little glitch here. I think we're back online, and uh, Rohit, you can pick up. Yeah, I'll put. Yeah, I'll quickly go through this. So when I was talking earlier, I was talking about this slide number 29, that hybrid apps are native, native application. What is different is they have an embedded browser inside them, which is what makes them different. This embedded browser acts like a common platform, and that's why you can create, you can write a common HTML5 application, and that application is actually loaded in this embedded browser. So that's how you get cross-platform mobile applications. Uh, the entire HTML5 application, which was earlier hosted, is now put inside the native application, uh, and it's loaded using this file colon colon, um, and that's why it's very very fast. Okay. Furthermore, the HTML5 application JavaScript can access all the native features because frameworks like PhoneGap or Trigger.io, which I'll be talking about, will expose the file system, the database, the network, the camera the contacts via JavaScript. So you can actually read the contacts, you can write to the contacts via JavaScript. So the application, yeah. Rohit, let's get a quick question on the JavaScript topic that came in. So is there a performance impact with JavaScript to communicate between the native app and the embedded browser? Um, so we, so uh, see, when you talk about performance impact, um, let me, uh, let me Put it this way, uh, if you are doing simple things like you are clicking on buttons and you are scrolling up and down and you are doing normal uh, operations which you typically do on mobile, on, on typical mobile uh, UI, you won't even observe what's happening. But for certain things such as uh, trying to get a geolocation, the API itself takes time to you know, find the GPS and get back to you. So there is a slight lag, but that lag is also there in native applications. So in, in normal cases, you won't even feel the lag from JavaScript to native. Uh, but if you compare it to a full native application, when you're doing something which is uh, uh, very, very uh, performance-oriented, uh, you might feel a lag. But typically, uh, let's say let's say you are, on, let's say, let me take an example, on Twitter, you want to go through your contact list and you want to check which all contacts you want to invite to Twitter, you won't see any lag in that because that's a normal operation. You're just listing the contacts from uh, native things you're putting it on, Java, on, on your UI, you're checking it, and you're sending those contacts. So for such kind of things, you won't see any lag. If you're doing something which is uh, much more performance oriented than, uh, than, than this, it depends on application. So that's, I, there's no easy answer for that. So um, the next thing is uh, slide number 32. I'm talking about the HTML5 app contains the BI, or it's a server which contains the BI, which is business logic. And in both the cases, these are common uh, code. The server is common. The HTML5 code is common. So that's a good thing. So let's say we, we were developing the sync client where we're trying to sync documents across mobile phones and devices. We didn't have any component available which would sync file, which would detect that the file is changed and would sync it. Or by syncing the file, we get the file by paths and would you know check for the checksum and ensure the file is you know has a proper integrity. So for this, what we did was we developed our own custom components. We developed the same custom component for iOS, developed it for Android, and so on. And then we expose this custom component via a JavaScript to the business logic in HTML5. So we're talking about building reusable Lego blocks, the native Lego blocks. And this is how a hybrid application can have full access. So while tools like PhoneGap and Trigger.io will provide you typical uh, you know, APIs like file, contacts, accelerometer, everything, everything, for something which is very specific to your business requirement, you will need to build this custom components. So if you use the PhoneGap or Trigger.io's basic JavaScript uh, uh, APIs to native, your cost of hybrid application will be moderate, low or moderate. If you try to build a custom component, your cost will go up because you will require a native iOS developer, you will require a native Android developer for doing so. So this is how we're talking about you know, using the best of both the worlds. We're talking about common code, 
which could be, you know, 60, 70% in some cases. In some cases, the UI is so thin that it's only 30% and the backend is so heavy. Depends on what you're building. So going further, we're talking about hybrid pros, talking about best of both the worlds. The native app is within the embedded browser. The HTML5, uh, the native app is actually within the embedded browser. The HTML5 components within the embedded browser. Business logic is in HTML5 uh, or the server. The sensor array is available via native. Any extension which you want, any native extension which you want can be built using hybrid approach. On the con side, uh, the development environment uh, could get complex because now we're talking about Eclipse for Android, Xcode for uh, uh, iOS, Visual Studio for, uh, let's say, Windows 7. Uh, CIT builds and release cycles could get complicated because now you're talking about some native wrapper code which is provided by PhoneGap or some native components which you're building for iOS, Android, and, and, and Windows uh, phone. And then some common HTML5 uh, um, you know, uh, code base which has your UI and business logic and communication with server. So development environment could get complex, uh, but that's uh, initial. Uh, once this is done, then the cost is always under control. Uh, you require limited native skills. You require people who at least know how to build Hello World and other applications for Hello World, iOS application, you know, uh, at the bare minimum. If you want to build custom components, you will need to have some skills. So instead of having a team of 10 iOS developers, you need to have at least one proper iOS developer if you want to build a native component because the rest of the whole application is built in cross-platform manner. Now you have pains from both the world. You have to catch up on a new OS, mobile OS um, feature which is coming in. Also, you have to keep a watch on HTML5 features. But this pain is far less than, uh, is, you know, the, the gain which you see, best of both the worlds, it's far greater and the pain which you see over here. But you have to keep an eye open for all these things. So on our next slide, slide number 27, we're going to summarize where does native application stand, where does HTML5 application stand, where does hybrid application stand. When it comes to covering platforms, when it comes to giving full capability or a rich uh, you know, mobile application. So if you're targeting a single application and you want full capability of, uh, of the OS, I would say the default choice should go with native because let's say you're building an application which is um, mostly for a mobile customer and you're saying that I only want to launch it on iOS and that's the only focus right now and I want to do the I want to do uh, a correct job at that and get get enough audience so I can go for version two and version three if that's your approach and only iOS is your target don't waste your time you can simply go native and you can use the full capabilities of native to you know, go that route. On the other hand, if you have a set business and you're, taught, you're trying to you know, just expose the business to mobile users and you're okay not to have the full capability of H for, for mobile platform, like you know, not having uh, access to uh, many features on a mobile phone, you can go to HTML5 route. With HTML5 route, you have access to multiple platforms, Android, iOS, Windows, anything which has a good browser, and limited capabilities, but you're able to expose your business to mobile customers. That works well. Now, if you're talking about full capabilities, like you know, application can be installed near full capability, and you're talking about multiple platforms. So, middle way is hybrid, where you still gain the full capability, and you're still you know covering a much more platform than a single platform which you're focusing uh, uh, you know earlier for native app. So, this is the graph which is typically uh, should guide you and and tell you why hybrid can be your sweet spot. You know. In, in, in certain cases. So uh, going further, we'll just talk a bit about hybrid app use case and we'll cover this very, very shortly because there are more important topics. So in, in case of hybrid app use uh, case study, even this cook office connect application, it's a file syncing service for mobile and desktop. You can think it about as Dropbox, but in, inherently it is different than Dropbox, but to save time, I'll just come back to Dropbox and say that if you have a, a, a desktop and a laptop and a mobile phone and you want your office open to be synced automatically across all these things, that's what we are building. It, is built, it was built as a hybrid mobile app. The UI was in HTML5. We actually used SenjaTouch to build the UI. Uh, the sync code, which was the main code to actually uh, uh, sync the files, was 
built native. It was HTTP, it was object C in iOS, it was Java and Android. And it was built using a framework like PhoneGap. We had this entire framework built in-house, and the reasons were, uh, you know, internal to us. We wanted complete control on everything. We did this a couple of years back, till, you know, all these platforms didn't mature enough. So that's what we actually did. And uh, it looks a little bit like this. You can just glance at the UI. The UI is quite polished. It, it looks quite good. It's, it's perfect for an iPad or a tablet. So uh, you, know, you can go through this, uh, these UIs in your own time when presentation is uploaded. There's also a quick video which tells you the functionality of Quick Office Connect. The only issue is you won't be able to find this product online because after Google like, wow, Quick Office, uh, they had uh, you know, shut this uh, product down. So you'll have to just go to the video to understand the work which we did internally. Now, the next most important question is when to choose which route. It depends on the number of uh, points. It depends on you know, how rich user experience you want. If you want the richest user experience, if you are, if the focus is like you want to compare your applications UI to UI to the level of what Apple does. Uh, with, with Apple, all its product, hardware or software, they are simply beautiful, and there is a they they will focus much more on uh, the look and feel. How, how the application flows, how the animation happens, how the icons looks, and everything, everything, everything. Talking about such things, the native is, is a better choice for you guys. Uh, on the other hand, if you're talking about a fairly good looking UI, like I just showed you on Cook Office Connect, you know, uh, HTML5 or hybrid could easily you know, work for you. In terms of performance, we had to look at the application performance overall. Uh, development cost is a, is a important factor. Time to market again is an important factor. So what we'll do is we'll look at all these uh, points in a, in a chart manner. So that's what we'll do. So here is a guidelines which, uh, according to us, uh, you know, works for most of our customers who come and ask us the question, which route to go. If performance is your highest criteria, the native is good. If performance requirements are, are high, but you're not paranoid about performance criteria. It's not a gaming application. It's not uh, uh, some kind of a, you know a, a clipboard kind of application where, which people just use because it feels good. It flows very smoothly. Then you can simply go for a hybrid. Otherwise, you can go for HTML5, uh, which is hosted. A rich UI again, highest is native, and both hybrid and HTML5 are moderate because the UI is HTML5 in both cases. For development cost, uh, I would say native is the highest. And for hybrid, even though I have done it high, this is the range. The range is from moderate to high. The reason being, if you're using default uh, components provided by frameworks like PhoneGap and Trigger.io, your cost would be moderate. So if you're just trying to access the camera to click the photographs from your you know, hybrid HTML5 application, or you're just trying to access the contacts, which is already provided by phone gap, the cost would be moderate. The cost would go towards high when you start building more and more you know, uh, native components, reusable components, like the Lego blocks I talk, talked about, your own sync client, your own encryption client, uh, all these things. So right, let's uh, take a question on cost right here, uh, since you're in that row. Uh, yeah. if, uh, if someone is trying to build a mobile app that needs to run on uh, all these three, uh, platforms, Android, uh, iOS, and um, Windows, uh, assuming Windows 8 that is coming up, and also mm -hmm. needs to support both tablet as well as uh, smartphone uh, format, and you know, support all the major uh, Android devices out there, cover most of the market, again, not exhaustively everything, for that kind of a target uh, need, if if you HTML, if you were to go through HTML5 development and that get you a unit of one on a relative scale of cost of mm -hmm. development, what would be that cost of development uh, relative cost in a hybrid and in the native to support all those platforms? So HTML5 is one, hybrid yeah. hybrid would be three to five, and native would be seven. Three to five because I'm talking about moderate to high cost. Okay. So three when you're building using the default phone app uh, features. And if you go with four and five, if you're building more and more native features like Agile for Office, 
where we build our own components, and seven for 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 native, seven and above for native because it will actually repeat across various uh, platforms. So that's the fact. Okay, all right, great, thanks. So uh, next thing is time to market, and time to market is the longest in native, modern, and hybrid because you really have advantage of your usability over here. Once your initial platform is set up, once your initial wrapper across all these platforms is set up, what runs is your common HTML code across all these things. HTML5 is shortest because all it runs inside is a browser. Um, in terms of app store engagement, you have maximum engagement for both. So, uh, Roy, so, sorry, let's take another question on time to market. Uh, so the question here that came in is, if, if someone wants to build for only one platform, let's say iPhone, uh, yeah. is the time is the difference between native and hybrid and HTML5, uh, uh, or is it longer time to market assumes because of multiple platforms that it takes longer time to market on native? If you're going to do only for one, one native platform like iPhone 5, will it be any longer? Mm, it would still be slightly longer on an intro iPhone platform because uh, so the thing is when you build this, see uh, what I'm going to tell you is based on uh, based on maturity of HTML5 or web application development life cycle. That's a pretty mature life cycle. People have actually understood very well. So if you're trying to develop the same kind of UI on native and same kind of UI on HTML5, uh, on HTML5 you will take much less time. Then now we'll take on, on iOS. So yes, even if you're targeting a single platform, uh, HTML5 or hybrid would take slightly less time than native. And it depends on what kind of team you also have. But I'm typically talking about that when you have uh, HTML5, there's already uh, you know set paradigm over there, and it's easier to uh, build UIs in HTML5. And it's iOS. You have to build different screens. You have to have transitions. You have your data flowing from one screen to another screen. For HTML5 or hybrid, that's already you know, uh, uh, you know, it's a big thing to do. Okay. All right. So in terms of uh, app store engagement, you get maximum engagement on native and hybrid because uh, you can you can sell your applications, you can upgrade, you can have in-app purchases available. For both native and hybrid, because both of them are actually native in their nature. For HTML5, there is no engagement whatsoever. In terms of security, I would say highest, high, and limited. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, the reason I'm talking about highest in native is because you can go paranoid and, and you can encrypt everything which goes over wire. You can encrypt everything which is stored in the file system. In case of hybrid, uh, you might be using a Ajax call to do a web service call. So that's why I'm giving a slightly rooting to uh, to hybrid. But in, 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 more, in a sense, whatever you can do on native, you can still do on hybrid. So security-wise, you can uh, you can have the data which you have on your uh, uh, mobile application inside applications secure, native and hybrid. In HTML5, uh, I've mentioned limited. Uh, it's, it's difficult to talk in, in terms of HTML5 because all you're using is this HTTPS connection to the server. And, and, and it, it, it's like a typical uh, web application. So whatever security you get from a browser to your uh, web application, the same kind of security you get over here. And we need to do a little time check. Now we have sure. just another two or three minutes. So we need to go to pick a few pages to summarize. And we'll sure, sure, definitely sure. have to do a little long hour of the presentation. Understood. Very clear. So now this is one of the last points what tools are available. So we're talking about two kind of tools over here. One is we're talking about a native application wrapper, which will actually give you the native application, which is an APK for Android, an IPI, IPL for iOS, and something else for Windows. And we're talking about an embedded browser inside uh, uh, the native application. So we're talking about HTML5 UI framework. So these are the two parts uh, which we need to be uh, understanding when building a hybrid application. So for uh, uh, native app wrappers, you have phone gap and you have trigger IO. We'll talk about them. For UI framework, you have Backbone and Sencha Touch too. Now there are many, many options in case of UI framework. There is jQuery Touch, there is, there is jQuery Touch, there is jQuery Mobile. There's so many frameworks. The reason I'm talking about Backbone and Sencha Touch is because they're at extreme ends. Backbone is very flexible. Sencha Touch is, you know, inflexible and it's, you know, it's more complete. So PhoneGap is the most mature native browser available out there. It's there for more than 
uh, two years, I guess. Uh, it supports seven platforms. Support within Accenture, it has a great plugin framework. It was owned by Mitobi. It's now purchased by uh, Adobe, and it's open source to Apache. And PhoneGap is uh, also renamed to a project called as Apache Cordova. So you can use those names, you know, interchangeably. Trigger IO is much like PhoneGap. It's built on the same paradigm as PhoneGap. It's much newer. Even we have to investigate it further. But it claims to be faster than PhoneGap, and it claims to have a better build process than PhoneGap. So you can build. It claims that you can build iOS applications on your Windows box. You don't require uh, Mac machines for those. So this is something to definitely watch out. Uh, I can't answer much questions on Trigger IO because we are still looking into it. Backbone uh, and such a touch. This comes in single page application development frameworks, which is more towards you know building uh, UI frame, UI in, in Java, HTML5. This is the most flexible framework. It works for both desktop and mobile device. So if you're building a, a web interface and you want it to run for both your desktop and mobile, you can use this because it works with any kind of JavaScript frameworks. This is, again, open source. Sentatouch is a, a framework of a company called Essentia. It was called as EXTGS earlier. It is the richest mobile UI framework. It is a complete framework comes with everything inside it. It's free for commercial use, and it's paid support. So you can check it out. And uh, finally, I'll just turn to the conclusion. Uh, there are factors which affect your choice. Is up what kind of features you have in your product. Again, time to time and cost of the market affects your uh, your choice. The kind of audience which you have. What what do they expect on the application? What kind of team do you have? What kind of earlier IP do you have? Will affect your choice. And in terms of uh, app richness and uh, you know time to market, this is a good indication of. HTML5 applications would be you know, fastest to the market with the lowest cost, but will be the least rich. In terms of hybrid application, along with the HTML5 Jazzy features, you will be able to access uh, things like camera, contacts, uh, other other phone features in them. So you know the app richness increases, um, also time to market increases. A native has the maximum app richness and maximum time and cost and maintenance. So with that. Um, there's a final conclusion that use native for richest UI. If you're focusing only on a single platform, you can very well go with the native approach. Uh, if you're building tools like authoring tools like you know uh, Word document viewer, editor, PDF, games, or very, very uh, powerful social networking apps, uh, um, or some less extended apps like uh, flip, uh, Flipboard and things like that, they require very, very cool animations and things like that, you can go over here. This is good for people who are very concerned with UX, with like Apple-like quality. HTML5, you need rich mobile user with minimal cost and effort. Uh, App Store marketing is not important for you. you. You already have a set business. All you want is mobile users to use it. You don't want to market yourself on, 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 on these things. It's be good for you. Also note that even if you have a native app or a hybrid app, sometimes it's good for you to have a HTML5 app. For example, Twitter still has its mobile web application because people who don't choose to install a, a, a native application or can't install a native application, a mobile version of a web application definitely helps them. In terms of hybrid, uh, if you need rich UI or richest, this works for you. Focuses on multiple platform, this is a good choice. It can be used to build enterprise apps, travel apps, news apps, sync clients. So I'm just giving some examples of these things. Uh, according to us, most of the time this should, this should suffice you uh, if you have moderate requirements and you're not, you're not uh, the requirements are not, not too much on that the UI has to be extremely extremely uh, smooth or you know it has to have animations or some effects like uh, you know like like page flip and things like those. Uh, it it would normally suffice your need. So with that, Hemant, uh, you know I'm done with my. Yeah, uh, Rohit, this is very good, and uh, I apologize for the audience because the glitch we had, so we couldn't uh, cover some of the other content and questions. So we're gonna have to just read, uh, revise, repeat this this word, word, version uh, because the topic is interesting enough, and um, do a better job of uh, discussion and questions. So thank you all, and I appreciate you staying a little longer than normally this uh, webinar would have taken. And we'll see you next month uh, for. We're going to have this either encore version of this or a fresh talk. Thanks.